So welcome to the third part of this posture blog. And in this blog, we're going to talk about how different aspects of our life can influence our posture. And something that's been very relevant to my life is what we're going to start off with. Pregnancy, pre and postnatal. Now, pre and postnatal can affect how our posture is because of how we sit. Well, more particularly, how my missus and how all the other ladies, how they stand, how they sit, how they slouch, how they hold their baby. And this can have a massive effect on their posture at the very current moment and in the future. Now remember, the body always wants to sit in the centre of gravity. And how we sit and align ourselves can influence how our body sits and aligns. And what you may notice during daily movements is you may have pain in your knees, the hips, low back. You may notice that your foot's getting flatter, it might get longer. Aches and pains here and there. You may see imbalances when you're exercising i.e. you might not be able to pull the right shoulder back as far as the left shoulder. Muscles will feel tighter. You feel like you may need to stretch out because the muscles feel that tight. And this is all because of holding certain positions when pre and postnatal. But it can have such big effects on the rest of your life. Now the best way to overcome any of these postural issues, whether that's presently or in the future, is to stay as active as possible, be as healthy as possible, go to the gym and strength train twice a week, that's more than enough, go out walking, plenty of walks, enjoy the sunlight, but stay as active as possible as much as you can. When it comes to strength training, don't just focus on quads or even just shoulders, arms, but focus also on your back muscles, your core, obliques, Lower back, your glutes, your hamstrings. Massively attack your posterior chain. A very undeveloped group of muscles in the body that needs to be more activated. Now think of the postural issues. The baby's weighing us down and we're sitting in this hyperextended position. When training during pregnancy, focus on sitting in a good, nice position. Okay, Engaging the core without doing core exercises like crunches, peg sit-ups, no need. So sit in a nice position, core nice and strong, shoulders back, not hyper-extended, not slouched over. And working the push and pull muscles, so some seated rows, some presses, some shoulder presses, some lat pull-downs. When it comes to the legs, some leg extensions, some hamstring curls, Maybe some squats, provided you're holding the core nice and tightly, very lightly. Could be goblet squats, tapping your bum on a box and up. And then some remaining deadlifts. And as the belly gets a little bit bigger, you may need to go into some sumo remaining deadlifts, taking the feet out wide, hands a little bit wider than the stomach, just to accommodate for the baby. We don't want to squash it, we don't put any distress. When you're sitting at home, not slouching, Sitting nice and tall, again, with a strong core, not hyperextended, shoulders back, not rounded forward. And it's just about being aware of all these postural positions that we can sit in. Obviously, we could do some Pilates, some yoga, become more flexible and mobile, but again, still working strength, bodyweight exercises. And as you can see, it's very strength focused. Staying as active as possible, keeping mobile and flexible, being aware of how you're sitting. Remember, if you hold that baby on the left hand side, swap over to the right hand side. Try and keep it as equal as possible. Because if you don't look after your posture, your posture will adapt to the position it needs to stand in to hold that sense of gravity. And trying to change the way the body aligns is always a lot harder than when it's been forced into that position. So to summarise this part of the blog, firstly, let's think about how we're sitting, how we're sitting and how our posture lines, how we're standing up, are we sitting one-sided, left or right, how we're holding the baby when it's in the belly, again, trying to hold a good, strong posture, no slouching, no hyperextension, how we're holding the baby when it's here, not just on the left-hand side, not just on the right-hand side, but swapping equally, Try and go to some strength and conditioning classes. 
Build up both muscle groups, the push and the pull, equally. Try some Pilates, some yoga, where the person knows how to train and exercise with someone who is pregnant, post and prenatal. And I can't stress enough just how much you need to be aware of how your body's sitting or standing and lining up. Be very aware of your posture, because like I said, it's harder to fix once it's changed and adapted. And in the next part of the blog, we're going to talk about obesity, which will be slightly related to what we spoke about today in pregnancy. And you'll notice how there is very common occurrences between all of them that will alter and generate the same postural issues. And the more aware of all the aspects of life that can alter our posture, the better it is to potentially make sure it doesn't happen. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it very useful. So as we know, as the baby develops, there's not just weight coming from the baby itself, but also from the liver and water retention. And what tends to happen is, as that belly starts to grow, the centre of gravity is going to be pulling us forward because of that weight of the baby, the liver, the water retention. And because the body doesn't want to fall forwards because of the weight of the belly, what will happen is the lady will then hyperextend as you can see, pushing the back up in the air so that we hold that centre of gravity. But as we hyperextend, as you can see, what happens? We also create an anterior pelvic tilt or hyperlordosis, which is going to put a lot of pressure on that lower back. Very uncomfortable for yourself moving forwards. And the problem is, if you sit in this position for nine months, the chances are you're going to sit in that position for a lot longer because your body would have adapted to that position. And then one of the other positions that people tend to go into, well, ladies, should I say, is they slump. They want to protect that belly. They want to hold it nice and secure. They want to make sure that they're giving that love already to that child, which is absolutely fine. Because you're in that slump position, the shoulders are rounded over. You've got slight kyphosis in the back, which is rounding of the upper back. And the hips sometimes sit in that posterior pelvic tilt. So we're in this slump position, as you can see. The head, hyperextended, holds us in that centre of gravity again to make sure that we're not falling forwards, we're not falling backwards or side to side. Again, after nine months of sitting in this position, it can create issues for your posture moving forward. Again, having the rounded shoulders, kyphosis. The head in a forward position, in a hyperextended position also. Posterior pelvic tilt. Again, creating and causing havoc for you and your body moving forwards. Now let's talk postnatal. Now one of the common occurrences of having a child is we tend to hold that baby or child on the same arm as opposed to swapping over and changing. Now let's say you're a left-handed person and you're holding that child, whether they're two kilo, three kilo, four kilo, up until they're two years old, three years old, on one side. We will not be standing nice and square because obviously we're trying to hold that center of gravity. So the body will tend to fall over with that weight. So what we tend to do is Shake that left leg so we're standing full in the left leg. Right leg goes out as you can see. The right foot will turn out. As you can see now, the left hip is hiked. The left shoulder drops and the right shoulder will hike like so. Also putting an offset on the head. And this is how the body will hold that new centre of gravity. Now again, whether this is for two months, three months, nine months, three years, your body's going to adapt to this position because this is the position that you're holding on a daily basis, with the weight of the child ever increasing. And this is going to make your posture very lopsided. Again, as we said, left hip is height, right shoulder height, the head tilted slightly to the right, the right leg's turned out, tends to be, well, it will tend to be more pronated, flat. And when it comes to exercising, or even just moving on a daily basis, you're going to feel this in your knees, your hips, your lower back, your shoulders, 